Hello you guys and welcome to episode 3 of this 30 day wellness series. If you're brand new here my name is Stephanie, we make fitness content, food content and a bit of lifestyle um, and we're just doing a bit of a revamp in the month of September because it's the month I feel like is coming into autumn time, there's a shift, there's a change and this is the time of year to focus on yourself and focus on wellness not just chasing that summer high or bikini body, it's time to lock in and actually look after you. So I decided to start a wellness series. It's 30 days long, but we're doing 15 videos. So a new video on YouTube every second day. And it is essentially to give you all my tips and tricks I have learned over the past seven years of going to the gym, eating a healthy balanced diet, skincare, hair care, just general positive vibes. Um, it's everything that I wanted to put into this series to help you become the best version of yourself. So if you are new here, please give this video a like and subscribe and also comment down below and introduce yourself, say hi, um, and just join the club, you know? Um, we're just wanting to do a really relaxed video today um, and talk to you about five health and fitness truths that is really the secret as to how you get to where you want to be. Now these are truths you've heard 500 times, a thousand times, over and over again, but they are the pieces of information that you need to hear a thousand times for you to take it on board and let it sink in. So whether you're in the gym, if you're in the car, doing a walk outside, chilling on the couch, whatever it is you're doing, get your earphones in and just chat. This is just a chill out chat. Let me be your big sister. I'm at the stage of life now I can be your big sister and tell you all of the things I have learned over the years so that you can avoid wasting your time and actually get to where you want to be. Okay, tip number one is there is absolutely no secret to getting your dream physique or feeling your best or looking your best. It is literally a blueprint that if everyone just applied it to their life, you would get exactly where you want to be. Now, as much as I'm saying it's not a secret and it's very much a kind of handful of things you need to do, and they're not hard things to do, like the information isn't hard, but to actually stick to things day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, over and over and over and over and over again and trust in processes is hard and we know that. So tip number one is, there is no secret. There's a couple of harsh truths or fitness truths or realities. I'm not here to tell you, um, here's here's five quick fixes because I don't believe in quick fixes because they don't exist. Quicks. Quick fixes equal short term results and they're not sustainable. We about sustainability here. I want you to come away from my channel and feel like you have tools to like implement into your life to have a healthier, happier, stronger, fitter, more positive life for the long term. Like I don't want you to go away and go, okay, I'm gonna do this for two weeks um, to feel good for my trip to Zante and then I am just gonna fall back into my regular habits and feel crap. That's not why we're here, okay? We are here for the long haul. So, number one, the one you hear all the time, consistency. Consistency is key. And I mean, consistency and time, we're gonna put them together. So there's consistency in that you need to be doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Again, um, to get results and you need to stick to it consistently. It's not a case of, okay, I'll do something really hard for four weeks or I'll do something really short term. No, you need to have a long term plan and you need to make daily changes and habits or weekly changes and habits that you can sustain long term and you can do them consistently and sustainably and actually stick with it. So consistency in a few different forms. Number one, consistency in that if you're trying to eat a healthy diet, there is no point in trying to be super strict and really limiting Monday to Friday to then get to the weekend and just go absolutely tonto as they say and just go everything's out the window and that's it because that isn't sustainable it also leaves you feeling rubbish it leads to binging it's just not a balanced lifestyle so consistency in your nutrition is finding your balance that allows you to eat healthy 80% of the time and then 20% of the time is for the soul food is for the Oh, Krispy Kreme, I bought out a new donut. 
ooh, I'm going out for my dinner tonight. Ooh, I'm going for, do you know, it's that kind of thing. So I have nailed my balance perfectly for me. I have so for years and I never ever feel like I restrict my food. I never overly crave something to the point that I end up binging on it because obviously I get cravings but then I honour those cravings because I eat healthy most of the time. So consistency in that you need to be smart about your food and eating healthy most of the time but also being realistic and having your treats here and there so that overall in the picture you've eaten healthy most of the time and not try to cram it all in Monday to Friday and then falling off the bandwagon at the weekend and doing more damage than if you just had the bit of chocolate on Tuesday when you felt like it. Consistency with your workouts is going to the gym the number of times you set yourself you want to go to in a week. That did not come out in a proper sentence. Say you want to go to the gym four days a week, then you consistently go to the gym four days a week. You don't go two days this week, four days next week, one day the week after, four weeks, that kind of thing. You find a plan that works for you, that you can sustain and you can do consistently. Am I trying to, what is happening with my tongue? So it's working out what actually works for you. For me in this stage of life I'm at, so I used to go to the gym six days a week. Did I need to go to the gym six times a week? No. Now. I go to the gym four times a week. I spend no longer than an hour there at a time. I am now 30 years old. I run a business. I have a baby. I work from home. I have a partner that I want to spend time with. We have a lot going on in life that four times a week is a realistic time that I can go. Make it non-negotiable and be consistent with it. If you have four days a week that you're going to the gym, pick those four days and stick with them. Just stick with it and say, these are my four days. I cannot swap them around unless you really have to. These are the days I'm going and that is it. So for me personally, because of the way our lifestyle works, I go to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Thursday and Saturday and those are my days. And if I don't go, then I have to wait till my next day. That's just the way it works. Um, because obviously Adam also wants to go to the gym and we don't train together anymore because we have a baby. Um, so there, consistency with that. But also consistency within your workouts. Your workouts, this will also be another point, but essentially your workouts are going to be pretty repetitive over time. You're not just going in and doing random exercises and throwing together things and calling it a workout. You need to be consistent and train in similar exercises to progress in them, to become better over time and actually build the muscle. That leads to point two, progressive overloading. Progressive overloading is when you are putting in more effort than you did the week before. So say you're squatting, say you're doing RDLs, say you're doing dumbbell presses, whatever it is, you always want to be doing more than you did last time to be able to actually challenge your body to build the muscle or to make the progress, whatever your goal is. So if you just go in and lift the same weight all the time, over and over again, not really trying, not really trying to get close to failure, not really pushing yourself, you're not going to change. You're just going to stay exactly the same. Um, so if your goal is to obviously make physique changes or strength changes or muscular changes, then you need to progressive overload. And you can do this in three ways. Number one, you can do more weight than you did the week before. If you're not at a stage of doing that yet, you can do extra reps. If you also can't do extra reps with that weight, you can do an extra set. So there's three ways to do it and you can do one of those. You can do one of those with your main exercises. It's not every single exercise you do this with. It's your kind of main exercises that we call compound lifts. So lifts that engage more than one muscle and joint group at a time. Squats, RDLs, deadlifts, military presses, dumbbell presses, lunges, these kind of things. I hope I'm not talking too fast. I'm honestly just trying to make this video concise because I did film it last week and I went on for 25 minutes and it really didn't make any sense. So we're filming it again. Following on from that is following a structured program and not just winging it. And what I mean by that is making sure you actually have a structure and a plan. And this applies not necessarily to your food if you kind of know what you're doing nutrition wise or you know how to kind of throw things together but especially with your training I love social media for inspiration and you definitely want to save workout videos that people post watch other people's workouts of course but if you're just kind of randomly following one of the workouts one day with no really reason as to why and then next week you're doing a completely different workout and not progressing from the week before because it's a completely different workout than what you did before you're not really also going to get to where you want to be. So basically, find a plan, and that can be from a personal trainer in the gym, it can be from someone online, it can be from my app, for example. Um, it just depends 
like what it is you're actually after and who who inspires you and who you feel like you want to take advice from but get a structured plan and a structured program something that's at least eight to twelve weeks that you can follow week in week out record your progress track your progress see how you're actually getting on versus just going in and doing a workout and hoping for the best because there's a very big difference between training and a workout point number four we have so far covered consistency progressive overloading, following a structured program or plan. Number four is going to be nutrition. Now again, you've heard this a million times and nobody likes to hear it, but as they say, abs are made in the kitchen. And what we mean by that is, and I worded this poorly on Instagram, so I would like to word it correctly here. Your nutrition will play the biggest role in your physique changes, both aesthetically and then also how you actually feel physically. If you eat rubbish all the time or junk food all the time but you're going to the gym so say you go to the gym five times a week and you're doing really good workouts but then you're always following up with mcdonald's or junk foods or whatever or you're under eating as well you're not going to see the results you want to see now obviously exercise is always beneficial no matter what but if you do have an aesthetic goal and you do have a performance goal nutrition is absolutely key but to tie in with this wellness series nutrition is also about making you feel amazing and making you feel so good and like i know myself like i love obviously going out to eat and i love having dessert and all these things but i definitely noticed a difference when i am eating way healthier and really sticking to my usual foods versus if i like eat out a few days in a row because we're on holiday or whatever and um, there's a big difference in how you actually feel your energy your mood your skin your sleep everything is affected so as much as you don't want to hear it nutrition is key but you have to find your balance it's not just cut everything out to feel amazing because you can do both you can have a, a bit treat here and there you can have your pizza you can go out with your friends etc i actually might make this six points because point number five is time and time and trusting the process and as much again nobody wants to hear this everybody wants the quick fix everybody wants to know okay what's the quickest way i can get in shape what's the quickest way i can get abs what's the fastest way to do this that and the next thing and quite honestly We've all been there and I've been there recently. So I literally felt like this when I first had Blake. Like, as you know, long story short, I had to take three months off the gym and was really like unrecognisable in my body postpartum, which is obviously going to happen. But I was a bit naive. I thought I was really fit before. You know, I've tried my whole pregnancy and as much as the bump got absolutely out of control um, and we gained like over 20 kilo, I'll be back at the gym in six weeks and all is well. <laughs> no, that's not quite what happened um, and I, I had to really <laughs> be realistic and trust the process and put in the time and the effort over the course of about nine months I would say now that I'm a year postpartum is now I feel so good I feel so good in myself and I mentioned this in my video the other day but I feel strong I feel fit I'm really happy with the way I look, I'm happy with the way I feel, and we're absolutely nowhere near the goal, okay? I want to be strongest, fittest, best version of myself, and we're obviously not there yet, but the time's going to pass anyway, and you need to commit the time day in, day out, small changes. I'm not saying every single day you have to work out, and every single day you have to eat super strict. It's what I said about consistency and sustainability. Finding small changes that you can actually stick to and implement every week that's going to make the big changes to your life. Small daily changes are what make the big overall changes. And the time's going to pass anyway. Like guys, I could have literally just decided, oh, this is what I look like now, like after having a baby, whatever. Or oh, it's going to take too long to get back in shape or it's going to take too long to do X, Y, and Z. It's going to take too long to grow my hair out when I'm doing a hair care journey. It's going to take too long for my skin to clear up. The time is going to pass anyway like please keep that in mind that if somebody said to you it's actually going to take you six months to get to where you want to be and you go oh six months oh no I, I don't want to do that for six months what else are you doing for the next six months what what else are you doing in the next six months like the time is going to pass anyway like just put in the small effort and changes please do it for yourself because see if I could like transfer how I feel on a day-to-day -day basis now don't get me wrong am I tired yes do I look after a baby 24 7 yes am I boob lopsided from breastfeeding yes do I still get up during the night yes but do I feel 
so good in myself for eating as well as I can, for training four times a week, for going out walks and getting fresh air, for treating my hair well, for doing my skincare well, being prepared, you know, sticking to my work schedule as best as possible. Does that make you feel amazing every single day? Yeah. Yes, it does. Versus if I was just like, I don't have time for that. I'm too tired for that. I don't want to do that. Discipline trumps motivation every single time. I am not, I do not wake up every single day feeling motivated postpartum right and I'm not saying oh look at me look what I did but I'm using it as an example after I had a baby we had a rough birth process I had stitches from my vagina to my bumhole I had a 3A tear I had extreme what's the word anemia I was gonna say pneumonia um extreme anemia um couldn't even walk up the stairs carrying my own baby for weeks because I was so low in blood and iron I wasn't sleeping because we had a newborn. Um, I was breastfeeding, trying to navigate motherhood. So many things, so many things. And this is still at three, the three month mark, you know, there's still a lot going on. Oh, I also had retained placenta and had to get that removed. That was lovely. When you first get back into that gym, you have all these things going on. And you still have to choose to eat healthy most of the time. You still have to choose when it's safe to do so to start moving your body again. Um, obviously, like I said, I did take three months off because that was that was where I had to be in my own journey. Um, and that's fine. So I'm not saying, oh, just jump back into it even though you're like dying of, um, an why can't I remember this word? Anemia? Um, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when you're at a position where you think, right, actually, as much as I'm tired, as much as this is hard, as much as X, Y, and Z, I can still do it. I can make the time. And I have been very lucky, obviously, um, that I have the support network with Adam that I can go to the gym. Um, you know, I am, I, we have, well, there's two parents in this situation, which is fabulous, obviously. Not everybody has that, so I'm very lucky there. And obviously, I'm very lucky that I work for myself. So if I have to be a bit more flexible with the time as to when I go to the gym or work around Blake's schedule and things, then I absolutely can. So I'm keeping that in mind that I am very, very, fortunate to be in that position um but if i could like trans for like give you the feeling that what it feels like to just put in the effort and to just wake up every day and even though you're tired even though you're x y and z you just have to say no i have a goal and i am the only person that can get me to my goal there's no one that's going to wake you up every day and feed you your meals or take you to the gym or make sure you're sleeping enough or trying to sleep enough or making good changes or you know sticking to a really simple but a good skincare routine or making sure you're looking after yourself as much as you can have a good support network no one is going to do all those things for you so as much as it's hard whether you're a student and you're at uni whether you're working two jobs whether you work full-time night shift part-time whether you have children like everybody's circumstances are different and everybody's circumstances are hard but if you do have the time, like if you're sitting there right now going, if you spent an hour watching a YouTube video or if you spent an hour scrolling on your phone, as much as we all need downtime, if you're complaining that you don't have time to do these things when actually the past hour you could have just done it, um, then please do it for yourself. Just find the discipline because that's what it comes down to. It's having in the back of your mind, this is my goal, this is what I want and I'm going to get it. You're not going to be motivated. Like I am not motivated most days. I wake up like, ugh again <laughs> um but by the time you do what needs to be done you feel amazing so there are my six tips i hope you guys take something from this video i hope it leaves you feeling positive motivated inspired happy i don't know whatever it is please comment down below though like how you're finding this series if there's any videos you want me to make within this series they can be anything that are wellness related health fitness lifestyle vlogs skincare hair care tips tricks the works I want to know because I'm here for you the next 30 days, i.e. the whole month of September. It's you me, baby. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in episode four on Saturday.